Hi there. Welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 3. And in this lesson, we're looking at how you use the addition formulae to find exact values of trig functions. Now, before we do that, there's a number of things that you will need to either remember or write down. There are the six addition identities for sine, cos, and tan. And we will be using all of these in this lesson. If you don't know them, uh, then quickly write them down now. The other thing that we'll be using is the exact values of certain angles for sine, cos, and tan. So these values you are supposed to just know if you're doing A-level. Sine, cosine, and tangent of zero, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. And again, if you don't know these, I'd quickly pause the video and write them down. We will be using them in this lesson. Okay, now combining those things together. Let's say, for example, that you had to find the exact value of the sine of 75 degrees. I'll get you started and then I'll let you move on from there. The sine of 75, um, we can find out by using the sine of A plus B and choosing A and B carefully. So if we choose A to be 45 and B to be 30, then we know the exact values of sine 45, cos 30, cos 45, and sine 30. I'll let you finish the question off. So pause the video and then come back to me when you're ready. Okay, from here on, it really is just filling in the values from the table that we were looking at just now. The sine of 45, that's 1 over root 2. The cosine of 30, that's root 3 over 2. Cosine of 45 is 1 over root 2. And the sine of 30 is a half. Now it's just fraction work. If we multiply those together and tidy things up, we'll get 1 plus root 3 over 2 times by root 2. We could rationalize the denominator, but unless they ask you to, you don't have to. So that will do. But when it says exact value, it is important that you leave it as the fraction with the square roots. What you cannot do is just change that to a decimal. If you start writing down a decimal, then you'll have to round the decimal at some point, and the answer will not be exact. So it is important on these questions. If they ever say exact value, they do mean exact value, and square roots need to be left as square roots, not worked out as decimals. Okay, example two. Given that the sine of A is minus three over five, where A is an angle somewhere between 180 and 270 degrees, and the cosine of B is minus 12 over 13, where B is an obtuse angle between 90 and 180, then find the exact value of these three things. First of all, the cosine of A plus B. Secondly, the tangent of A minus B. And thirdly, the sec of A plus B. Now, certainly for the first two, we're just going to use the addition formula for cos, the addition formula for tan. Uh, to do the third one and find sec, we'll be doing one divided by the cosine of A plus B. But again, I'll let you have a go at these yourself first. So pause the video, have a go, and then come back to me when you're ready to do so. Okay. Let's have a look at these. So the first one, the cosine of A plus B. Well, we're going to use the addition formula for cos A plus B, which is that cos A plus B is equal to cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. Two of those four things we're told in the question. So we're told that the sine of A is minus three-fifths and the cosine of B is minus twelve-thirteenths. So we can write those in straight away. However, we don't know the cosine of A, and we don't know the sine of B, so we need to work those out. And the easiest way is to work them out exactly, uh, it's the same in both cases. For cosine, cos squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared, because sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1. And sine A we do know. So cos squared A will be 1 minus, and sine A is minus 3 fifths, so that's minus 3 fifths squared. 
which is 1 minus 9 over 25, which is 16 over 25, and that's the cos squared of A, which means when we square root that, we'll find out that the cosine of A is 4 fifths. But it could be plus 4 fifths, or it could be minus 4 fifths. The easiest way to find out which one of those two things is correct is to use a cast diagram. Now, we were told in the question that the angle A has to be between 180 and 270. So if I draw a cast diagram, between 180 and 270 degrees, tangent is the only trig function that is positive. All the other trig functions are negative. That's what the cast diagram tells you. Uh, the letter tells you which function is positive for that range of values. And between 180 and 270, tangent's the only one which is positive. That means that we know that cosine A must be negative in that range of values. So cos A will equal minus four fifths. Now we've got to do the same thing for sine B. And again, we'll say that uh, sine squared plus cos squared is one, which means sine squared B is equal to one minus cos squared B. Uh, cos B we know, cos B is minus 12 13, so we can substitute that in. Working out that, we get 1 minus 144 over 169, which is 25 over 169. Square rooting both sides gives us either plus or minus 5 divided by 13. Now, we've been told in the question that B is an obtuse angle. An obtuse angle is an angle somewhere between 90 and 180. Again, the easiest way to work out whether it should be plus or minus is to use a cast diagram. Between 90 and 180 degrees, sine is the only function which is positive. And it is sine that we have. So in that case, it must be the plus value, plus 5 over 13. OK, we've worked out cos A. We've worked out sine B. All we need to do now is substitute those two values back into here. So the cosine of A plus B will equal minus 4 fifths times minus 12 thirteenths. Take away minus 3 fifths times by 5 thirteenths. It's just a little bit of fraction and calculator work from here on. That gives us 48 over 65 plus 15 over 65, which is 63 over 65. And that's the exact value. Cosine of A plus B is 63 divided by 65. Question two. Question two asks us to work out the exact value of the tangent of A take away B. Well, again, we go to the relevant one of the uh, addition formulae, which is that tan A minus B is equal to tan A take away tan B divided by one plus tan A times by tan B. Now, we haven't been told any tangents. We've been told sines and causes, and we've worked out a couple of other sines and causes. There are various ways forward at this point. But I think what I would do is say that tan A is the same thing as sine A divided by cos A. And tan B is the same thing as sine B divided by cos B. So tan A, first of all, that's sine A over cos A. Well, sine A is minus 3 fifths. And cos A, we just worked out in the last question. So that'll give us minus 3 fifths divided by minus 4 fifths, which is 3 quarters. So that's what tan A is, 3 over 4. Now we do the same thing for tan B. Tan B is sine B over cos B. Sine B we worked out in the last question, and cos B is minus 12 over 13. So that means that tan B is 5 thirteenths divided by minus 12 thirteenths, and that tidies up to give us minus 5 over 12. Now we've worked out tan A and tan B. We can substitute those into the identity, and that gives us 3 quarters, take away minus 5 twelfths, over 1 plus 3 quarters times by minus 5 twelfths. Fraction and calculator work from here on. That gives you 7 sixteenths, 7 sixths rather, divided by 11 sixteenths. And that simplifies to 56 over 33. And again, that's the exact value, so we'll just leave it as that. The third question is surprisingly easy, as long as you realize what we've already done. The sec of A plus B, well, sec is 1 divided by cos, so that's 1 over the cosine of A plus B. 
A cosine a plus b is what we worked out in part one. So we know what the cosine of a plus b is. Cosine of a plus b is 63 over 65. One divided by that will give us 65 over 63. So that's the answer to part three. Okay, that gets us to the end of this lesson. If you have the textbook, turn to page 76 and have a go at exercise 4b. Thank you very much for listening and cheerio.